Hello everyone. My name is Harsh Tawna and I am a robotics engineer specializing in navigation stack. Today in this video, I will be answering the question posted on Ross Discourse and thereby explaining some of the basic concepts regarding the Ross frame. Before going to details regarding the Ross frame, I will be explaining in brief some of the theoretical concepts with examples and demos so it can be easier to understand what the specified frames are and why are they required. Without further ado, let's learn some basics about Ross beams. Coordinate systems and its significance in mathematics. Ross frames are called coordinate systems in mathematical context. In any mathematical problem where we need to identify the positions or orientation of multiple geometrical objects of interest, we need to define a reference system. There are various standard coordinate systems designed for different dimensions and use cases which have been widely used in many applications to simplify complex computations and for making it easy for us to understand, design and represent multidimensional systems. In a generalized sense, the coordinate systems consist of multiple independent linear references which are uniformly divided into smaller units. This makes it easier for us to discretize and represent possible states of objects in system along each dimension. Some examples of the coordinate systems are given on the screen. Using the coordinate system as a reference and using the tools available for coordinate geometry, complex computations like real-time accurate simulations, modeling and navigation has become easier to work on. Need for multiple coordinate systems now that we understood coordinate systems, we need to understand why would we ever need multiple coordinate systems in any application. Why not just work with single coordinate system? Simplest answer is that the universe is a really huge environment and we will never be able to define a single unified coordinate system for any application. The main point of using coordinate system is the ability to choose where the origin and the axis will be. For different applications, a same system can have different coordinate system. There can also be subsystems in a system which has its own coordinate system. There can be an entire subsystem hierarchy inside a system. For a very compl complex application like automobile design, robotics manipulation or even gaming systems, it gives us the ability to divide the entire system into smaller components and have the related tasks done in a simple detailed manner so that it's easier to divide the workflows based on these components, maintain them and even control their states. Now we have an idea of the need for multiple coordinate frames we need to understand how do we work with all these different coordinate frames. To represent a coordinate frame with respect to another, we need the relative position and the orientation of frame with respect to another. Encapsulating both of these, we get what we call a transform. Mathematically, there are various ways to represent or use a transform. The standard is to define a world coordinate frame and store transforms of each of the coordinate frames we need to use according to the world frame. To simplify complex systems, we create hierarchy of these subsystems where we store child's frames transform with respect to parent frame so it's easier to work with the context and localizing the objects with respect to world in case the parent's states changes. Now let's answer to the question what is the difference between world, map and odom frames. What you see on the screen are the components of a standard ROS navigation stack. Mapping, localization and odometry are the components which help us understand where the robot is in the world. Here is the TF tree of a simulated robot. The frame of the base of the robot is base link. As mentioned, the hierarchical order of the frames is world, map, odom and base link. These three are some of the frames which are expected to be present in the frames hierarchy ROS TF tree. The world frame as explained before is the super parent which is located at the root of the TF tree. Map frame is created by the map server 
which defines a coordinate system of the environment where the robot can move. This is a static coordinate frame with respect to world frame. This frame is loaded by the map server which loads the map. Odong frame is the frame where the robot starts its navigation frame. The process of calculating the map to ODOM transform is called localization. The process of calculating ODOM to base link transform is called odometry. There are various plugins and algorithms available for odometry and localization. Because of the time constraints, I won't be able to get into the details of the algorithms. But let me show you how the TF3 of the map to ODOM works. Here we have a robot in a map environment which uses LiDAR for localization and wheel encoders for odometry. So when the robot starts, it doesn't know where it is in the map. But as it moves, the localization algorithm will keep trying to correct the odom frame so we can accurately understand where are we on the map and thereby the world. As you can see, the slowly laser data matching the map and now it's able to navigate through the map without any problems. So that was some basics regarding TF frame and hopefully I was able to explain in layman terms what auto world and map frames are. If any doubts or corrections, please consider reaching through comments or the forum. Thank you for watching.